A correspondent candid with Anderson Cooper. Anderson, when you showed your story about mindfulness to the executive producers of 60 Minutes, right. you said that the story had changed your life. Yeah, well, I was telling the story, but... Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. It's rare that you do a story like this and find that it actually kind of changes your life. I was totally skeptical. I, I went into it, you know, respectful, but uh, like, really, I'm going to spend a, week, a weekend at a meditation retreat. I'd like to invite us to begin. And we're going to sit around in a circle on mats. And then we're going to sit there silently. Settle into a, an erect and dignified posture. And then we're going to eat silently. We're going to just sit there eating silently without talking. And then we're going to do walking meditation, which is just, which is walking back and forth silently for 30 minutes. We're going to do that. And I gotta say, I love the silent meal. I liked the walking meditation. There's a guy named John Kabat-Zinn. A lot of people point to him as the man who's maybe one of the most responsible for the mindfulness movement in the United States. What is mindfulness? My working definition of it uh, is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. I don't feel I'm very present in each moment. I feel like every moment I'm either thinking about something that's coming down the road yeah. or something that's been in the past. Well, it's first of all an occupational hazard of being human that will be projecting into the future a lot or uh, worrying about the reminiscing, future. Exactly, worrying about the future and reminiscing about the past and what went wrong and who did what to whom and who's to blame and what my story is about it. You know, that so internal we're, dialogue that we all we're have. We're creating narrative constantly, narrative, narrative. I mean, look, thoughts come and go and you, it's impossible to stop your thoughts, mm -hmm. but uh, the idea is that, that the thoughts are kind of like waves on the ocean. That's John Kevinson's big analogy and that this is actually kind of diving under the waves. And, you know, it's kind of interesting if you've ever swum in the ocean and you go underneath the waves, um, you know, you're kind of moved by the currents, but you're not being slapped around at the top of the water by the waves. And, and that's sort of what meditation is like. The idea is to at least for a few moments, sometimes just a few seconds, sort of not be agitated by the thoughts, but to, um, to kind of be aware of your breath. Seeing if you can allow each in-breath to be a new beginning and each out-breath a complete letting go of everything that's come before? The thing about mindfulness which has really stuck with me from this meditation thing is, is just returning to your breath. And to the timeless quality of the present moment. Well, community formed around One of the things that John Kabat-Zinn talks about is that everyone wants to figure out how to live longer. But this actually is a very easy way for you to live longer. Maybe you're not extending your life, but you are present and living more of the moments of your life. It seems that you're living longer. It, you are living longer. You are, you are living. Again, this sounds like a cult. It sounds like I've sort of drunk the Kool-Aid, but, um, <laughs> but in a way I've sort of drunk the Kool-Aid. The story will continue after this. I realized on this story, sitting in that meditation retreat, this is exactly what I need. Um, thank you for coming. It really has changed my day-to-day -day life. What are you doing differently? I meditate, I, like I try, not every day, but even if I'm not doing that meditation, the moments of my day have changed because I'm, I'm not on my phone so much. I'm intentionally not checking my phone every two seconds. It's a little disappointing to get your phone after, after all this time. It's sort of the last thing you really want to see again. We've always been good at distracting ourselves, but now, I mean, you see people walking down the street with earbuds on and looking at this or whatever, talking to themselves. So there's more and more opportunity to never be where we actually are and just be. If you're not present, are you missing out on your life? Well, what would you think? Probably. You're about to go to CNN right. and do some interviews for tonight. Right. Would we see anything? Would we see you meditating? No, no. Like uh, at Google, sometimes they start off meetings with like a minute or two of mindfulness. 
I don't do that. I, 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 like, I'm not subjecting other people in my workplace to do this. I don't want like HR issues. So <laughs> I'm not like enforcing mindfulness on people. We're not going to see you doing this in the studio and the camera. No, you office. won't see me in my office listening to like a chanting on a <laughs> CD player while I'm burning incense. No. <laughs> it's not another thing you have to add to your list of things to do. It's just being. And, you know, we're not used to just kind of being.